Greetings and welcome to this lecture and example in Strength of Materials. And this one is about thick walled pressure vessels. And in previous ones, we discussed thin walled pressure vessels and uh, the stresses in them and the assumptions we make. But thick walled pressure vessels, the analytical situation gets more complex. So, what do we mean by a thick walled pressure vessel? So I'm just going to make a cylindrical pressure vessel here and make sure it's got a fairly thick wall. We have some dimensions to work with. We have the outer diameter, the inner diameter, and the wall thickness. So we'll refer to the outer diameter as DO, inner as DI, and the wall thickness as T. Inside, we of course have the pressure P. And in a thin walled pressure vessel, it's so thin that there's really no major difference between what's going on towards the inside and what's going on towards the outside. But in a thick wall, we have a higher stress usually on the inside and a lower stress on the outside. On top of that, we also have radial stresses that change and push from outside to inside. That's in addition to the longitudinal stress it goes along its axis and the hoop stress that goes along tangentially. Now in order to develop the thin walled pressure vessel stress, we even used an assumption that the thin wall really didn't make much of a difference. And the uh, so that made some of the calculations easier. For the thick wall, well, there are a number of steps that need to be done in order to develop the equations. And luckily, that has generally been done by someone named LeMay. We should all be thankful for his work. Now, these equations are shown right here in this table that I developed from this book. If you have the opportunity, please buy it. It's an excellent text. And you can see that if you know what kind of geometry you have, whether it's a cylinder or a sphere, and you know where you want to measure your stress, do you want to know the stress somewhere within the wall? Well, you better know your position R within the wall. Or if you simply want the maximum stress, then you use this column here. Now note that the maximum stress is at the inner surface for all of the different types of stresses, with the exception of the longitudinal stress. The longitudinal stress is assumed to be uniform throughout the wall. But these other equations here can get uh, a little hairy, with the exception of the maximum radial stress, which is simply going to be the opposite of the pressure. So you need to know your inner radius, your outer radius, the radius of interest if you're finding something within the wall, your internal pressure, that's if you want to find the stress. We're going to do an example where we actually find our maximum internal pressure knowing what stress our material can take. And one final note that positive stresses are tensile and negative stresses are compressive. So algebraically, if these things end up being negative, then you'll know it's compressive stress. Now, if you happen to have a uh, negative pressure, in other words, you happen to have maybe something that's more of a vacuum inside your vessel, then you know, you'll have to enter that in here, that it'll be a negative pressure. So, um, and that's uh, 
becoming more and more important these days as we have more and more processes being done under vacuum, so uh, like vapor deposition and the like. Okay, back to our problem board. Okay, so we have a problem here where what we have given is a sphere. And that spherical pressure vessel is made of AISI 501 OQT at 1100 degrees and it has an outside diameter of 500 millimeters and a wall thickness of 40 millimeters and we have a design factor of 4. And we are asked to find that maximum pressure that this should be able to take. And that's based on yield strength over here. So the first thing I want to do is see if we can get by with uh, the thin equations because they're a lot easier. So I'm going to check on that. For this to be thin, I need the wall thickness to be less than the inner diameter divided by 20. So the wall thickness is defined as 40 millimeters and I need that to be less than 500 millimeters which is the outer diameter. Now we've got to find the inner diameter and I have to subtract twice the wall thickness. So twice 40 millimeters and then divide all that by 20. And I end up with 40 millimeters is less than 4.1 millimeters. And guess what? that is not true. So that means it's not thin. So we need to use the other equations that we have. So let us go check out which one we need. Okay, so we have a sphere and we are looking for the maximum stress. So we're looking actually at the uh, pressure here. So when we find the pressure, we'll know that's what the stress is for the third principal stress. The other two stresses are going to be whatever we calculate for the material. So we just need to solve for the pressure on the inside. So we've got this as a material property here. This is our material property. This pressure is our loading property. And the rest of this has to do with our geometry. So um, each of those parts, material property, loading property, and geometric properties play a role in these uh, strength of materials problems. Okay, back here, let's finish this up. We have to use our governing equation, which we identified there as our first principal stress, the maximum, and that's going to be pressure times b cubed plus 2a cubed and all of that over 2 times b cubed minus a cubed. Now for this value we look up 
our yield strength for this material and we go to our textbook references and here's our material and here is our yield strength 931 megapascals okay going back to our problem board we enter in 931 megapascals and we want our stress in our material to not go over one quarter of this yield strength so I'm going to make this equal to the pressure times b cubed plus 2a cubed all over 2 times b cubed minus a cubed. All right. Well, what we need to do is solve for p, because that's the one unknown we don't have that's what we're looking for right here trying to find that maximum p so i'm going to multiply both sides by the inverse of this fraction just to get it off of this side i'm going to multiply by the inverse of this fraction and then set p equal to that so p equals SY over 4 times 2 B cubed minus A cubed all over B cubed plus 2 A cubed. And then we can start substituting things in but uh, we need to know A and B first. So those are fairly easy to calculate. A is, if you remember, well, we can look it back up. A is right here. It's the inner radius. B is the outer radius. So the inner radius is going to be half the outer diameter minus the thickness. So half the outer diameter is the outer radius, which is going to be 250 millimeters. Then subtract the wall thickness, which is 40 millimeters. So that'll be 210 millimeters. B is easy. It's the outer radius, 250 millimeters. And then the yield strength, as we have already found out, is 931 megapascals and when I plug all that in it looks like this we have 931 megapascals over 4 times 2 times 250 millimeters and that's cubed now that's the 250 and the millimeters cubed. It's not 250 cubic millimeters. It is 250 millimeters quantity cubed. So make sure you enter that in your calculator correctly. Because the units will work out whichever way you do it. So that's going to be a possible source of trouble. Then we have 250 again cubed 2 times make sure you don't cube the 2 in this one all right now if you're careful with your calculations here you should come up with a pressure of 86.8 
megapascals. Okay, and this could be our answer, but remember we have to go back and check to see if our stress is going to be too large. So we don't want our stress over that uh, yield stress divided by 4. So we found our pressure and our pressure is going to tell us what the radial stress is. So let's go down to that. So this still has to be less than 931 megapascals over 4. And if you do the math, you'll find out that it's true. So this becomes our answer that our pressure should not go over 86.8 megapascals. Now to recap, we started with uh, the difference between thick-walled and thin-walled pressure vessels showed how a thick-walled pressure vessel is going to be different. It has the added radial stress and that in, uh, changes some of the required mathematics which were done by LeMay. Then we went into a problem which was a sphere and we found the various uh, factors that we we checked to see if it was going to be thin. Then um, upon finding out that it was thick walled, we looked up the required formula, determined what our uh, maximum stress was going to be, found out what our other variables were, and then set about solving for the maximum pressure. Well, I hope this video helped you understand pressure vessels just a little bit better. And I hope that you keep watching and learning more about mechanical engineering.